Hey, this is Steve Quillian from Wood Window Makeover, and this is how to make a bottom sash. There's a whole lot of reasons why somebody working on these old windows is going to need to make a window sash, and they're um, sometimes they're rotten, sometimes they're missing, sometimes um, there's just all different kinds of reasons why you would need to make one. And uh, the bottom sash is, it's a very good entry place to sash making because there's just so many of them. So I've got a sash that I've got to make, right? It is 30 inches wide, 24 and a quarter inches tall, okay? so. I'm just going to start by drawing that out, okay? I'm just going to, you know, a sash is a square, right? And in that square, you've got different parts, and this, these two sides right there, those are called the styles, okay? And you got a top here, that's the meeting rail. And then you've got this bottom part right there, that is the bottom rail, okay? So I'm gonna split this up into just a few basic activities, okay? And before you can really even make these pieces here, we're gonna start with rough lumber and we're gonna mill it down to what we call blanks. And what blanks are, are each individual element properly sized thickness, width, length, out of which then you can cut your joinery, okay? So we're gonna split it up into styles, okay? And then we're gonna do rails one at a time. And that, you know, I think you can follow along with that, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. And um, first things first, you know, let's go, let's go cut our uh, rough lumber to an approximate size to give us something to work with. Okay, so here we are in the back of the shop. You know, I've got a nice stack of rough lumber, okay? A typical residential sash is an inch and three eighths thick. So I'm gonna start off with this piece here. It's called six quarters. Four quarters is one inch, six quarters is inch and a half give or take. It's in the rough, so it's usually inch and a half or a little bit better, and we're gonna plane it down to an inch and three eighths. Okay, so if I've got, um, let's see, I say 24 and a quarter inches high. Okay, here's my 24 and a quarter. I'm gonna add about four inches here just to account for any kind of something called snipe, all right? And then I'm gonna, see my next measurement was 30. So it's 30 inches wide, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna call it 34 that way. That'll account for any kind of defect on the end I might have. So I'm gonna take my circular saw and cut it to rough length. So this is rough right now. So what I'm gonna take it over to my joiner and I'm gonna flatten one side and get it nice and flat. And then I'm gonna send it to the planer and copy that flatness to the other side to get a nice inch and three eighths thickness, okay? And then I'll also straighten one edge on either side. That'll give me something nice to work with. This is a joiner, okay? And this is an eight inch joiner. This is, you know, industrial strength shop mode and all that kind of stuff. You don't need one this size to start, okay? I've got other ones that you can, they, you know, they're entry level, but what this does is this will get the, a nice flat surface on my wood. I'll send it through, and it'll be rough to start, but then it'll be smooth afterwards. I'm gonna do that right now. Just to re-emphasize what I've done is I have flattened one side and then I've also flattened the edges as well. And this, 
this forms a nice 90 degree corner there, okay? My other side is still rough. I'm gonna send that through the planer and that will copy this flatness over to this side and it will get it to that consistent thickness. And it'll take a few passes to get there, okay? I gotta check my thickness, okay? See where I am in relation to an inch and three eighths. I'll check it this way here. So starting at my eight, it shows that I've got an inch and a half thickness. My planer takes off a sixteenth of an inch at a pass, so I got two more passes to go to get to inch and three eighths. Okay. Double check, I did my math right. Yeah, I'm right at an inch and three eighths. Okay, nice, perfect inch and three eighths. Now that I've got it the right thickness, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take one piece and make styles out of it, other piece make rails out of it. Okay, and I'm gonna take that to my table saw. My height is 24 and a quarter. So I've got my shorter board here. That's 20 by 24 inch board there. I'm gonna cut my styles out of this. Your styles are usually two and a quarter inches wide. So I'm gonna cut two styles, two and a quarter. I've got my saw set already. Good to go. Turn on my dust collector. There's my two styles right there. Now I'm gonna cut my rails, okay? My bottom rail typically is three and a quarter. So there's my saw set at three and a quarter. Get that guy cut. That's good. So, this is my third piece. I need one more piece, and that is my meeting rail, okay? Meeting rails are a little bit different in that you cut this to width at an angle of 10 degrees, so it's gonna be something like, something like so, okay? That's not exactly 10 degrees, but you kinda get my point, so. So, I happen to know that seven turns on my table saw is 10 degrees. So I'm gonna set this an inch and three quarters because that's what a typical meeting rail measures out to. All right, so you see that angle? Okay, so the thing about a meeting rail on a bottom sash, okay, is when you look at it, I'm going to turn it the way it sits, okay, and it, the angle is going to face away from us. There's going to be a molded edge right there, and the glass is going to come up into a groove. I'm going to cut that groove right now. It's going to be somewhere in that realm right now, and that's going to be cut at seven-eighths, seven-eighths from the inside face. Lower my sawtooth, saw blade there. Set it at seven eighths. So my Steve. Why is it seven eighths? Well, that's a good, it's a good question. Okay. Seven eighths is what you get when you add a half inch plus three eighths. Okay. Somebody says, well, what does that make a difference? Well, it's kind of like this. And you'll see when we cut our tenons, the, uh, 
And this is really important to remember about windows at the turn of the century. They had really simplified their methods and they always put the mortise and that tenon right in the center of the board. So like if I've got this style right here, and you'll, I'll do this in a minute, my mortise hole, that's gonna be centered equally between both edges, okay? And that tenon's gonna go, that mortise is gonna go right in the center. So typically the space here, that's gonna be, let's see if I can do this upside down, one, can I do it two upside down? It's a half inch, I did it. Okay, and this is gonna be three eighths, and right there, let's see, three eighths. Oh, I did it. And this is gonna be a half, right? There we go. So that's the way it is, okay? So, and this will be the molding side, okay? This will be the where the tenon goes, and this will be where the glass goes, right? So I'm gonna cut this groove right there, and it's gonna be a half inch plus three eighths to right there is, a, is seven eighths, okay? So I got seven eighths here. See that? Okay, so now I'm gonna widen it just a little bit just so my glass fits in there a little bit. So I'm gonna move my fence over a little. The 15 16th or so. There we go. Okay. Okay, so now that's a nice glass groove right there. And it's almost, it's about ready to cut to length and we will be finished making our blanks and then we can mark out our joinery. Let's start with the styles, okay? Styles, I like to cut together and I'm just gonna use my meat clamp, okay? Holding it together just like that. And first thing I'll do is I'll square up one end, okay? I tried. Now that I, you know, I've kept my meat clamp on there and these two faces here, these cut faces are flush. And I'm gonna pull, and I'm gonna mark where my bottom rail is gonna go on here. Cause remember, I'm working on my styles. So if you can imagine this, okay, I'm marking for my bottom rail and this is three and a quarter across here, okay? See that? A three is upside down, but you can see that's three and a quarter, okay? So the top of my mortise is gonna be the top of that board. So I'm gonna pull from here and I'm gonna pull up a half of an inch, okay? I'm gonna mark it on both sides, same time. See that? Come up here to three and a quarter. Mark my three and a quarter there. And if I did it right, this guy's gonna fit Oh, see right in there. See that line right there? Should have fit right in that hole. Now, somebody says, well, why did you mark a half here? Okay, well, good question. Because I'm gonna cut my tenon on this side and, and I'm gonna cut it, oh, about a half inch up right there. Okay, so that way that tenon is completely housed in my piece. Okay, so come up a half of an inch and that'll make that happen. So that's my first mortise, okay? My mortise layout. I'm gonna, there's two different ways to do this, okay? Um, I know what my overall length is supposed to be, 24 and a quarter. I could come here, mark that, cut it off, come back and then pull the width of my meeting rail, which would be an inch and three eighths. Or I can just know that it's gonna be an inch and three eighths from this mark here and go ahead and mark it now. So an inch and three eighths from here is gonna be that mark right there, 22 and seven eighths, okay? So I'm gonna put my mark right there, mark right there, 
okay? Put a couple of X's there. Now, those are marked. Let me cut that off, okay? And those will be my styles. And we'll be styling. Okay. All right. Now I'm checking with my finger back here to make sure everything's all lined up. And if it is, squeeze my meat clamp and pull the trigger. Okay, so these are my styles, okay? And um, it's important to know that when you have your two styles on a window, okay, that when, you know, you've got these two, these, these two faces marked out, okay, these two, face, these two faces will then face each other. See that? Okay. And when, that, and when that's the case, you have to be cognizant from this point forward of where you want the inside of your sash to be. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put them back together, okay? and take them over here and I'm gonna mark a line across it like that and I'm gonna put an X right there in my line. Look what happens when I split it apart. Two opposing arrows, okay? And what that makes is that indicates two symmetrical pieces. So these styles need to be symmetrical. Watch what happens, okay? take those two arrows, and when I face those mortises toward each other, look, both those arrows are facing the same direction, okay? And that represents the molding face of my sash. And that's really, really important, okay? And I have to remember that, and those arrows will guide me through the rest of the sash making process, okay? So I've learned this the hard way. This, those are really, really, really important mark, see? Opposites. Okay, so these guys are ready. Now, for the mortises to be cut, let me show you something else, okay? On the back side of this, I'm gonna pull 12 inches, okay? And what the 12 inches is gonna be, okay, that's approximately where the hole is going to be drilled for my knot in the rope. Because we, the, um, this is going to be the top, right? Okay. So this is my meeting rail for my bottom sash. That face, that goes upwards. Okay. Follow me. I turn this over, it's still the same. This is where my pulley trough is going to be. Okay. See how I did that? So. 12 inches where I'm gonna drill my hole, okay? My pulley trough is gonna be here because this is the part that's gonna go up into the, when you open the window, this is gonna go up past the pulley, okay? And this has to be able to bypass the wheel of the pulley and it'll travel in this little area right there, okay? So 12 inches is a good measurement for my knot hole, okay? And then I'm gonna make a trough and then I'm gonna connect the trough to the knot hole by means of a little, trail right there. So my styles are laid out. I'm going to set those to the side for a second. Now all I have to do with my rails is cut them to length. Ah, here's a good discussion. How long do I know to make my rails? Okay. If I just tell you that my sash is 30 inches wide, okay, that I need to make my rail 29 you have to understand why I say 29, okay? Because it's not a random number, okay? Um, it's one inch less than the width of the overall sash, but how did I get there? I've got a video you need to watch. It's called How Glass Size Influences Sash Size. Okay, it's on YouTube. Now, this is not working. This is not working. Um, Okay, so now I've cut my styles. Now I'm gonna cut my rails to length, okay? How long? Well, if my sash is 30 inches wide, I'm gonna cut my rails 29. 
Okay, just one inch shorter than the official sash width, okay? And that'll give me enough room for my tendons and everything will fit really, really good. So I'm gonna cut that right now. The second piece, maybe you were paying attention, I didn't even measure. Well, because I'm a cheater. And when I cut my first one, I kept my piece right there, and then I came over and I made a mark where it stopped, and then I just put my next piece there, made a cut. Oh, it was really nice. Little tricks like that make it fun. Okay, so now I've got my rails, okay? And I've got my styles, okay? And this, these are fully loaded blanks. So it's at this point, you divide the work up, and now I'm gonna go I'm gonna take this over to my mortiser, okay? And I'm gonna make my, my square elongated re rectangular holes for my mortises, okay? And then I'll do my, my rails after that. So here we are at the mortiser. This is a hollow chisel mortiser. This is a 3 8 inch hollow chisel mortising bit. It's got a drill bit on the inside, okay? And this outside shank here is nice and sharp on the inside, so it cuts a nice square hole. And remember those arrows? I line my arrows up to the fence, okay? And then squeeze this guy down really nice and tight, clamp him down. Cool thing about this machine is it's got this wheel and you can drive back and forth, okay? Allowing you to make a really fast tenon. So you're gonna see that when I make my mortises, I'll start on one end and make a hole go to the other end, make another hole, and then I'll chisel out the middle. And what that does is that takes into account the phenomenon that happens that when you drill your first hole, the wood surrounds the bit on all four sides, okay? But once that hole is, initial hole is there, you've got a weak spot where your initial hole was. And so when you try to elongate it, the next place you go down, the bit's gonna try to walk into your um, your initial hole. So to stop that from happening, I drill one here, and drill one there, and then take out the middle. So. Now this is my meeting rail mortise. And this starts at inch and three eighths, and goes all the way to what will become the top of the window sash. So I'm just gonna, it doesn't matter if it goes into the, the hole, because um, it goes all the way to the end anyway. Yeah, there's that. Arrow toward the fence. Yeah. Push him in like that. Okay. Yeah. So these are my styles, okay? And my um, mortises are done. Now I have to do my pulley troughs, okay? That's what's next. Okay, so look, I made my mark at 12 inches for my initial rope hole, okay? Knot hole, where I'm gonna put the knot on my rope is gonna go. I use this drill press here. It's already set up for that, okay? But to make this same hole, you can use a, um, you can use a hand drill if you want to. Now look, also notice how I'm going at an angle. It's really important. to go at an angle because what that angle does, you can't really see it, but it creates a subtle hook for your knot, you know, the rope, uh, knot on your rope to latch onto and keeps it from coming out really easy. See that? So I'll do the next one. You can see me do it in an angle. Okay. So this is the top of the sash, okay? And I angle it so that the angle is going upward toward the top of the sack. 
There we go. There we go. Okay. Isn't that nice? Okay. So now, um, so now is the hard part. Okay. So far, everything's been kind of obvious, kind of self-evident about how you go about doing it, right? But some this pulley trough for a lot of people seems to be kind of elusive. So what I've done is I've created my own router table here um, with a, um, uh, a half round bit. This has got a 3 8 inch radius in it, okay? And I've got a stop block up here, okay? That makes my um, trough the exact same length every time. And then I, right here, I've got a quarter inch um, carbide spiral mortising bit, okay, and that will cut my trough from my uh, my rope trough from my big pulley trough to the to the knot hole. Okay, I'll show you that. There you go, see that? Nice matching holes. Same, the pulley trough and the rope trough, knot hole, all done. So these guys are ready for the sash factory to put profiles on and rabbits and stuff like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and run my rails now so that I can run profiles on both my styles and my rails at the same time. This is just a regular table saw that's got a dado blade mounted into it. Basically what it is, it's several blades attached where one blade would be that makes a really, really wide cut. And this makes it really nice and easy to make a tenon, okay? So you'll see how that works, okay? Oh, also I've got this homemade sled here. You can use this or you can use a, a miter gauge that comes with the saw. I like this guy better because it gets right up there on the blade and um, I can make these as often as I want. So, so the first thing I'm gonna do, okay, is I'm gonna cut my tenons on this rail here and I'm gonna cut one face there. I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna cut the other face, all right? And then this is the side that I sawed. So I'm gonna cut that face too, okay? So my cut is about a half inch deep. So I'm gonna cut a half inch off of this side, half inch off of that side, half inch off there, and have a really nice tenon. It'll be really fast too. So look, you see what I did? And the, the cool thing about the tenon being centered in the piece is that it makes it really easy to use a table saw to make a tenon. Because you just have to take equal amounts off both sides and the tenon's automatically centered. To me, that's just smart. So, you know, you do it to both ends. There you go. Okay, so this guy now is ready to take to the sash factory, okay? Now I'm gonna do the meeting rail. Meeting rail is a little bit different, okay? You have to put tenons on this too, but this will create, this is like a forked tenon, as you'll see. And so I can't turn this one the same way I turned that one to make the, the tenons. So I have to use a combination of this saw and a different setup over there to get the cut that I want. So I'll start with this one to get my initial, um, to get my initial tenon started, but then I'll take it over there and finish it. This is a tenoning jig, okay? These have been around for a long time and basically it's designed to hold your piece vertically, okay? It's got this little clamp to hold it in place and you want you know 90 degrees in both directions and you pass this over the saw blade and it will create the cut that you need okay let's 
this is the fork here. But the other thing too that um, I think it's important to realize is that I've got this long point of this angle and that long point of the angle I have sticking out to the right, whether it's, or I guess to the camera's left. Yeah, I have it sticking out to the outside of the saw for this handle, regardless of whether it's this way or, or that way, okay? It's always facing that way. And the check is, okay, you've got this nice square end here. That square end fits in the square corner, okay? And that's how you know you're right. If you stick the angled end in, it doesn't fit right. So anyway, but now these guys are ready to take to the sash factory, okay? So take them over there. The next thing I do before I actually have to, to go to the sash factory here, I have to drill my hole here that's gonna allow me to assemble it really, really nice. It's called, um, called relishing. And I really relish the idea, frankly, I do, so. But that's, that's this over here, okay? But this here, this is gonna allow me to bypass the molding, okay? And then I, okay? There you go, it's got a nice Forstner bit in there. Good, okay? Basically, at this point, the, window sash pieces here you've got your styles here and you've got your rails here this becomes cabinet door joinery okay and i'm going to put a profile and a rabbit on the on these two pieces here okay and then i'm going to cut the negative to the profile and the rabbit on this piece here so it marries down really really nice okay and the the negative cut here uh, is called the cope, and that's going to be this little guy right there. I'm going to cut that first. Uh, I got a vacuum cleaner here. There we go. What I want you to see here, okay, and this is really important to realize about what the Sash Factory does. See how nice and smooth this is? Okay, compare that to the other side, okay? This is still roughed in with the, with the table saw, you know, with the dado blade. And the router bit here smooths it out and just takes off a, just a hair and finishes sizing this tenon perfectly. So this, this bit is perfectly dialed in to make this the exact 3-8 that it needs to fit into that mortise. Okay, I wanted to tell you that. I want to do half. See what it does? Okay, we're on the home stretch now. All we have to do is cut our molding profiles in, glazing rabbits, and it'll be assembly time, okay? Okay, so look. Let's talk about my styles first, okay? Look. See my arrows here? My arrows determine how I run it through my profiler, okay? And actually, I want to set, I want to run it through with my arrow down and facing the fence. And so I'm gonna do it that way, okay? Arrow down, facing the fence. We did this coping cut first, okay? And the reason you do the coping cut first is because no matter how hard you try, you always get that little bit of blowout right there, okay? And that's okay if you run it first because now I'm gonna run it through the profile. And the pro doing the profile second will now erase that 
and give you a nice clean cut, okay? I'm gonna do that on, on this meeting rail and I'm also gonna do it on the bottom rail. Ta-da! That's about it, really. Now we have to go, and if we did, did everything right, it should assemble pretty easy. Let's go check it out. Okay. All right, I've got my Bessie clamps here, ready to go. That's anticipating everything's gonna fit well. Hopefully it does, okay? So, I've got my Two styles here, and I want you to see, okay, remember those arrows I pointed, okay, I made, now I've got two opposing, two symmetrical pieces, I'm going to face, when, I, when they face each other, it'll all be part of the inside of the sash, see what I'm saying, that's real important you get that, uh, that one thing right there, that's probably a mistake that's made the most often is making parallel pieces <laughs> instead of symmetrical, you know, so. All right, so let me try this out. Okay, I'm gonna do a test fit real quick. All right. Oh, it goes in there really nice. Nice. Okay. Like the way that fits. Okay, very nice, okay, very good. So now I know that's good, let's test the meeting rail. There we go, a little bit of blowout I gotta contend with, not a big deal. Little adjustment on the sash factory should be fine, okay. Oh yeah, there we go. Isn't that nice looking? Woo! Get that in there now. Oh yeah. That's what I like, man. That's a nice shot right there. So. i put this guy on the top. adjust these guys. Okay, clamp it all together. Oh man! So now I've got it in my clamps. I gotta fasten it all together. Before I do, I gotta check to see if it's square. And when it's square, my numbers, corner to corner, will be the same. All right, I got 38 and 3 sixteenths. Oh, at 32, or 38, 3 sixteenths. All right, 1 eighth. I got to do a little bit of chiropractic adjustment. Call me the wood doctor, all right? Oh, that's perfect. That's really nice. Boom, okay. That's my sash there, okay? And use some stainless steel staples. All right, take it out of Oh, that's looking really good. So beautiful. Okay. Little sand. That would be nice. Okay. Now I'm going to take over to my table saw and cut the bottom off.
All right, this is Steve Quillian for Woodwind No Makeover with this method to make a bottom sash. It's a great introductory to sash making. Hope that you learned something. And by no means was this like the full exhaustive you know, explanation, but this will give you a good idea on what it takes to get started and the tools involved. So if I can help you in any way, let me know. I'll be glad to help. Um, Steve Quillian from Woodwind No Makeover, the general of the Artisan Army. Love you guys. Over and out.